Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. This is Alexis with Community Income Tax. Um, joining us today, we have Don Evanoff again, the Technology Product Manager over at TaxWise. And today we're gonna do a first time webinar for um, you guys, and we're gonna cover the TaxWise Solution Center um, and all of the features built in with that. So we're going to go through a lot of different topics in the next hour or so here. Any questions you guys have, feel free to type into the Q&A, and we'll go ahead and get to those at the end of today's webinar. And I will pass it on over to you, Don. Alexis, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I know we're getting close to the holidays and then, of course, the start of tax season. So we wanted to show you the TaxWise support site so that you can help yourselves and don't have to call and wait for somebody to help you on something. So the URL is support.taxwise.com. So again, support.taxwise.com. And when it opens, it opens to what we call the solution center. When you log in, if certain things you need to log in for, then it is the support site. So some things you need to log in for, some things you don't. You'll see all the menus across the top and I'll go over them in a minute. What I'm gonna start with are the knowledge base here where it says search your knowledge base. And this knowledge base is for tax wise, it's for IRS e-file rejects. You'll notice I typed in IND 504 for the individual 504 reject that the IRS sends back. And you'll see here reject code R000504, each dependent. Let's get rid of this. There we go. Uh, dependent social security and the name and date of birth don't match the database file. So oh, there we go. Um, so you can use the knowledge base for tax wise questions. How do I do something in tax wise? And you can type out like a whole question. How do I get to TWO training? So here is your how do I access TaxWise desktop or TaxWise online product training? So you can ask a question like that or like I did with the IND 504 um, or like if you get a validation error, you can copy and paste it in there. And a lot of times if we see a certain validation error more than one or two times, we'll enter a knowledge base uh, answer in there so you can find things. Make sure you have it marked for tax wise. Otherwise, it gives you everything else. So always make sure, sorry, everything's liking to pop up on my computer this morning. Um, make sure that you mark tax-wise. Otherwise, you'll get ATX, you'll get access, you'll get all sorts of things. Um, so this way you find what you're looking for. The more info you put into your search, the, the less queries you'll get. So again, just try and make sure that you type enough in and click the search button. This is what our support reps use to support you. So instead of calling into support, you can just check here first to see whether you can get the answer right from here. This is how our support reps look up everything and you're using the same database as they are. You'll notice it opened in a new tab so I can close the tab and I'm back to the solution center. I'm gonna clear that out. The other thing that's big here is the password reset center. So again, if you have to reset your password, if you come in here and look at the reset center, you can come down and you can click on TaxWise Online. And there you'll see, is, are you trying to reset an admin password, a user password? Are you trying to create or modify a user in online? So uh, how to do each one of them is right here. So again, if you're confused by it, it opens the KBase article. You'll notice there's a video here for it. 
And then there's the actual directions. So you can watch the video if you're more visual, or you can read the directions to reset it here as well. Again, it opened in a new tab. I'm just going to close it because otherwise I get way too many tabs open in a training. I'm going to click back on home, which was where we were. The next thing is to find answers. And I'm just going to scroll up a little so we can see these. So if you want to learn or know something about TaxWise Online, if you click view TaxWise on Learning Portal, you'll notice now you'll have to log in with your client ID, username, and password. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now you'll see all of the courses. And if you click the plus sign, and I'm just looking at set up an administrative. Um, if you do set up an administrative functions. It tells you accessing and navigating, setting up TW online or admin functions. I'm just going to click that again. How do I manage my returns? How do I import? How do I export? How do I use the audit logs? How do I get reports? Okay, so there's a lot of information here. Here's all your setup. So again, if you're doing setup and you need to know you want to change something in the client letters, you can click on client letter template and go through it or online check printing, right? You can see here how to do your online check printing. So all of the lessons are within here for the learning portal. You'll see it's under learn. Practice is your practice returns. We give you practice returns. So when you get people in, if, you, if they're like not comfortable, you can play the tax payer and role play and you can cut the documents up. So again, if you look here, it brings you to the knowledge base answer. And then if I come in here and I want to do the beginner scenarios, there's intermediate and advanced. I can just click on it. And it opens. I still can't get used to this being up at the top instead of the bottom. And each one tells you exactly what you're going to learn or you'll practice in the scenario. It gives you some additional information. So John's not married, has no kids. And then it gives you their information, a little fake social security card, and then there's a W-2. So each lesson kind of builds and gives you more to learn or more to do in each one. So again, it's a good way to get back in and practice and go ahead and try the returns. I'm going to close these again. Engage is we have a question and answer session that we offer for preparer or administrator. And so you can also uh, join those. You can register and join those as well. I'm going to close all these and go back here to the Solution Center. We have desktop as well. So if you're using desktop versus online, but I think most of you are online, you have the same thing with the learning portal. The next one is really, really important, and you can get to it from here, but you also have a link on your dashboard on TWO, and that's to go to the blog. I can't tell you how important that blog is for you guys to keep an eye on. We update it constantly, like throughout the day if we need to. So if our phones are blowing up with something, somebody, everybody's calling about something. And maybe it's a state that hasn't been released yet, right? It's the beginning of the year. Usually California and New York are late. Um, ah, hold on. You know what I just realized? I'm on my VPN and it won't come in if I'm on my VPN. So let me just. Close this and go back in. Um. So if something's causing calls or there's information that the IRS or states have sent us, we will put it out here so that you know. 
So again, it is not a one and done one, one time a day. Um, if you notice something's weird, if you can't print, if you sent uh, returns and you didn't get acknowledgements, always come and look here first. So you'll see we have an urgent message we put out on the 18th, and that's for the shutdown for modernized e-files. So if I open it, it's telling you that for the business returns, that the IRS is shutting down on Tuesday the 26th. But in order to make sure all the returns get in, we're going to shut our EFC down on the 21st. So if you're doing business returns right now for 2022 or any other prior year, you'll have to get them in by 10 p.m. Eastern on the 21st, or you're going to have to wait till the IRS opens back up for 23 because they're doing their shutdown and their rollover to, to put the new 23 in. So again, any of these business returns right now, you'll have to get them in by December 21st or you're going to have to wait. So again, anything that's urgent, we mark urgent. Uh, there's reminders. We'll come in and let's see. Here's something from North Carolina. Let's just open that one. Nope, open the wrong one. Let's try the North Carolina one. There we go. So here's news from North Carolina. And it was that the acknowledgements were delayed. So a lot of times if a state's having problems or they're holding acknowledgements, we'll post it here because we've gotten so many phone calls of like, I didn't get my ax, I didn't get my ax. Well, then this is why. And, and it usually will tell you if we have an ETA of when roughly they'll come through. Um, so there's a lot of information on it. Here's a new one here about our solution center that on December 14th, they were going to do a limited update to the solution center. And what it is, is creating support cases and viewing the knowledge base in the video library. So again, you can click on the K-Base article. It will give you all the information about it. Well, that's great, let's go back. I'll have to tell them they didn't put it there yet. Um, but it will take you to what this the article usually and let you know what's going on. So what happened is they changed the look. Hey, of hey Don, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, <laughs> your screen went off probably about a minute or so ago. Ah, okay, hold on. Let's try and share this screen again. Perfect. So I think it was on my end, but we were getting some messages in about it. <laughs> Okay, can you tell me if you can see my screen again? Uh, yep, it's back up, thanks. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure where it went out, so I'm on the blog. And again, there's a link on the support site and there's a link on the dashboard in TWO. So this is what it looks like. Um, and again, I'm not sure where I lost you guys. So when you go here, if you click on it, it'll note the information here and what I was talking about how Thursday, December 21st at 10 p.m., all of these returns have to be in or else you have to wait until the IRS comes back up. So we're doing that to give you time to get in before they shut down. Okay. I was showing you the state of North Carolina. They were talking about having issues uh, with their act. So again, you can see all this here. Make sure you check it. I typically check it first thing in the morning to see if there's any problems like the IRS is holding acknowledgements so that I'm not wondering why the returns I sent last night aren't acknowledged this morning or state returns um, or if there's any problem anywhere. The other thing too is we typically put in here when we take our electronic filing center down uh, to do maintenance. It's usually like the middle of the night, Sunday night into Monday morning. But if we ever have to do maintenance at any time, we normally put a blog post up that what time it's going to go down and what time we expect it to be back up and what systems it's going to affect. Because um, it depends what we have to do with what servers. So we have that all here as well. And again, the change to the solution center is right here. Um, and so 
and we put a we keep putting stuff in like the shutdown because it's really important that we make sure that everybody knows it's getting shut down. And so we keep posting it right up until the point, the last day. So you'll see it all here. So that's the blog post. And again, looking at it a couple times a day, as I said, I usually look at it first thing in the morning. If I get a minute in later in the morning, I'll check it again just to see if anything new popped in. I'll check it at lunch. Then I'll try during the, and all I do is open it and look and see if there's anything new. So I know what's going on because then I can be proactive instead of reactive. If somebody calls me and says, Hey, you know, what's going on with my return? And you're like, Oh, I don't know. It never went through. It never got accepted. You can say instead, Oh, the IRS is having issues with their acknowledgments. They said that everything we sent yesterday, that they were holding on for the acts and we should get them by whatever time they tell you, three o'clock this afternoon, if that's what it says. So again, always look at that blog. It will really help you uh, to get ahead of what's going on instead of wondering what's going on and then calling into support going, I didn't get my acts. You'll know why. Also, you have research uh, tax-related topics. This takes you to Answer Connect. And so it comes right up to Answer Connect, and then you can search anything you want. I just did EITC. And again, there's all sorts of information here for EITC. For different years, the schedules, EIC and eligible individuals, who's a qualifying child. So there's a lot of information in here as well. Okay. So you can use that for anything you need to look up on Answer Connect uh, for tax law. Okay. On my account, uh, you can look at your invoices. So if I click on pay, it brings me in and shows me all of my invoices here. You'll see I have some for uh, e-signature because we've all been messing with it doing demos. So I have payments there for e-signature. So you can click on the invoice number and open it so you can actually see what it says. I know mine was free signature because it was $3.99, but there is the invoice for it, okay? So we're good to go there. And just as a reminder for any new clients or returning clients, the IT's program don't charge for e-signatures. Right. Right. So that's just something Dawn has in her account. It's not something you would ever see, just the $15 invoices in there. Great, Alexis, thank you. Well, I need to get under your program so they stop charging me by accident because really mine's all just training. <laughs> I'm right I, have to, I have to go have somebody credit my account so I don't get overdue. <laughs> On here under the contact us, you can chat with uh, CCH so you can click on it. You can use the A of the chat so you can search a term in here and, and chat with the virtual. Um, if that doesn't work, then you can chat with a live representative. So again, what kind of help do you need? And is it technical? Um, one thing to remember is technical is like hardware. We don't, our, we have a support group and then we have a tech group. And the tech group is much smaller. And what we see is a lot of times people go uh, to tech thinking that that's just support. But it's more hardware for technical. So if you're having installing desktop and you're having an issue installing, that's a technical. But if you need to reset your password or you have a question about a reject or anything else, then that would be just your tax wise uh, tax support. OK, so just make sure you click on the right right group. So here you can chat with someone live or you can use the virtual assistant as well. Okay. 
If you need to open a support case, you can click on the new support case and you'll see this looks a little different than we used to have. So if it's a billing question, if it's a product or technical, you can click on those and then enter your support case of, of what it is. If it's something you don't need help with right away, uh, you can do the support case in there and they'll get back to you usually within 24 hours. You also can contact a sales rep. No, you don't. You don't need that because you're going to go through CIT. Sorry. You can click for support hours so you know the different hours. So again, you're going to come on here, which will bring you to a KBase article. Uh, you will look at here and here's the schedule and the dates. So on here, we're closed for holiday, December 25th and January 1st, January 2nd through February 26th. We're open 8 to 7, all Saturdays 10 to 6, and we're closed in January and February uh, until the 26th of February. We're closed on Sundays. Then you'll see here February 27th. Again, we're closed here as well. So the 7th, sorry, the 7th and the 14th of April were open on Sundays to help everybody get finished up. So your hours are all here as well. So a lot of information that you may want to know are right in those main three boxes. Um, and that's why we put them there so it was quick and you didn't have to look in the menus. They're also up in the menus that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, your downloads are here as well. We have a download box. So you'll notice I'm not licensed for 23. I guess I have to fix that um, to get your uh, installation if you're doing business returns to get your desktop installed. And then you have your two years prior that you can still e-file. So it should be under your client ID with those reg codes. And then prior years are also here to 17. So again, we, we hold seven years for you to get to. And so the way you can get to the downloads is all right here. You can also go to the downloads menu item if you want. But again, it's right on that main screen when you open up. We have a getting started with TaxWise. So if you're new to TaxWise or you can't remember from last year, um, because sometimes, you know, you do it once a year and you come back and are trying to remember and you can't. So there's a lot of quick start information here, um, how to log into online, how to download and install desktop, about your reg codes, you know, make sure you have your PTIN and your EFIN ready to set up your user and put your PTIN in. So there's a lot of information here on what to do, what's new in 23. Again, we have links to the learning portal. So you're if you're in here and you need to go to the learning portal to see how to do something, you can. And then we have frequently asked questions as well. So that's a good document that a lot of times you can find answers in. Oh, I got myself right out of COM, right out of the sports site and into COM by accident. There we go. We'll go back to it. If you need product updates, so if you're working in TWD, remember in TaxWise Online, we do all the updating. You don't need to. But if you're in TaxWise Desktop and you need to do updates for the states, for the programs, again, you have program updates. There's no state updates yet. It's blank. Uh, remember, you would add your states to your package and then it would show up for you to install them or download them. But again, not there yet. Bank updates, same thing. There are no bank updates right now. And if you're using payroll compliance, the W-2-1099, your updates are here as well. You also, again, can find them under downloads. All right. So there's your software, but there's your product updates. So you can do them both places. Let's click on home and not get myself knocked out again. There's a payroll compliance learning portal as well with lessons in it if you use the W-2 or payroll compliance uh, product. So you have that. You have your user guides. Didn't mean to click on it. Yep. 
and it doesn't want to take me home. Okay. Oh, this is just doing wonderful things to me. It's going everywhere today. Alexis was having trouble with her computer this morning, and I laughed and said it's a Monday, and now mine's giving me fits. So you have user guides here as well. So when you click on the user guides, you have the different user guides. There's your TaxWise, your payroll compliance, your TaxWise online, and you'll notice we have 23, 22, and 21. So your user guide is here if you want to use it. Again, you can also find that within TaxWise online. Um, your user guide, of course, under your help menu. Same thing with desktop. There we go. Reports. So you have some reports in TaxWise Online, but they're very few compared to what desktop has. And that's because we have a lot of reports on the support site. So here are all of your reports. I don't know if they've released them for 23 yet. Yeah, not yet. Probably the beginning of January, we'll see reports here. But you have all of your reports here uh, with different information in it. And in order to get a report, I'm trying to look at one here. I've got one here that I haven't done. You click generate. And depending on, you'll see here, it says new. And mine is came through today at 11.58. Again, you'll have to remember, I don't have a lot of information in mine. Um, and so mine don't take any time at all. You usually have an Excel icon that you'll click on. And this is just a different report. I didn't grab it quick enough at the top. I'm going to do that again. And then I'll download. And that's. It was a prepare fee report. Oop, went on my other screen. Let's bring it. Well, flick back over there again. So here's a prepare fee. And again, I don't transmit anything, so I don't have anything listed. But shows you all your columns, and then you'd have all your data uh, listed here as well. Okay. So that's how you would get to your reports. Conversions, if you're coming from another software and you're new uh, to do your conversions, you'll click on here. I'm sure Alexis and her team helps with conversions, uh, but you can click on the conversion and let's just say you're coming from Crosslink. You can look at the, hold on, let's snooze this baby for a couple hours. Um, you can come into your Crosslink conversion. You can click on the Read me file, and it gives you the exact instructions on how to do it. So there is how you can do that conversion, okay? So you'll have the information here, and then you'll actually run the conversion by clicking on the little disk box with the arrow to run the conversion. Version. So again, you can do that right from here, but I'm sure they will help you at CIT if you have conversions. System requirements, what you need. Please remember for online to use a, uh, Chrome or Edge. Those are your two best browsers. Uh, if you're using desktop, you'll want to look at the system requirements. You know, we don't support Windows 7 anymore, things like that. Um, will be in the system requirements. You also can get to the blog from here. Um, and then under quick links, you have your calendars and charts. You have your return query to look up a return for this client ID that you've logged into. You have PDF forms and instructions. So if you're looking for a form that's not within TaxWise Online or TaxWise Desktop, Sometimes there's oddball forms that you can only do by paper. You can find them here. You can find others as well, but you can find those PDF forms here. 
The form's release schedule and the module delivery and e-file dates is very important at the beginning of tax season. The form's release schedule, this talk, it tells you about whether you can print the return to mail it in, whether it's been approved for print. So you'll see here, the individual income tax return has been approved, okay? And you'll also notice we support e-file for it, but the 1040 SP, we don't support e-file and it's not available. For the 1040 ES, the estimated tax payments, we're waiting on final, final approval is pending and we support e-file. So again, you can come in here and you can look by jurisdiction. So I'm in Georgia. I can look at Georgia and see what's going. I'm waiting for approval for the 500, the GA 500. They don't support e-file for estimated tax payment vouchers. So again, everything is here um, on your printing and whether we support e-file for that particular form. Okay, so that is there as well. And then the next piece is the module delivery and e-file dates. So here you'll see, um, let's go to the individual, federal individual, and you'll see that it's the planned release for it is 1228, see it here? And it's been approved. So the individual e-file will actually get turned on or right around the 28th. But if you look at like fiduciary or tax exempt, their plan, this one's approved, but they're not going to be released until 2-8. If you look at the top, these are the e-file estimated releases, and then there will be the dates they are actually released. And again, if you scroll down, there's Arkansas, Alabama, California, Connecticut. All your states are here too. You see DC is all in testing. So it's all being tested right now. We do not uh, have approval yet and it changes. They typically update this every day by 10 a.m. Okay. So usually every day it's updated based on what's happened by 10 a.m. in the morning. Again, you can get to Answer Connect here, and you really don't need anything from the European Union here, uh, but that's there as well. Okay. I don't know if you use any of our business partners, but this tab is about our different business partners. Um, so again, if you want to have any information or know more about them, you can look at this. Or again, talk to Alexis and her team. They'll help you with anything as well. I'm going to come up and just go over uh, the menu items. So again, my information, your account, that's where you'd get your, informa your invoices. My product information, what products do you have? We have our bank enrollment. If you use Calm, that's where you could get to it. I don't believe you guys do. Uh, you can look at your fee here you can get to reports so you can do all of this under my information the support menu it has your hot topics and your blog posts they're pretty much the same the hot topics and the blog um, we're trying to move everybody more towards the blog so we can get rid of those hot topics your knowledge base again it's the same thing as if I typed it in right on the main screen your user guides are here, your system requirements, calendars and charts, the forms release. You can open and view your support cases. This is where you can chat with support if you want again, but it's right in the green box there. Um, and so all of that is under support. Under downloads, installing your TaxWise software, installing the W-2-1099 program. There's your updates for the W-2-1099. Here's your product updates for your desktop software for federal, state, banks. Your conversions are here. So again, everything is here. But we had those other links 
easier to find down there. So again, whichever way suits you, by all means. Here's your return query, your online check printing. So if you're doing online check printing, it's under e-file. Federal and state e-file availability, your e-file calendar, so, and then all of the state government websites are here as well. Training, you go to the learning portals. Again, we have all the different ones here that you can do as well. Under tax and accounting, most of this you're not going to really use. Um, and then again, our business partners, if you want any information. And then we added, and I want to, I want to get started. I want to download my software. I want to convert my data. I want to update my software. And then it takes you to the right place for each one of these. So you have those as well. If you need to add people to use for support in your office, other preparers, under manage users, any user that I've set up in TaxWise online will also show up here as a user. If you want them to do more, you can move them either to a manager or administrator, depending on what you want them to be able to do. And again, you can find that information of what it allows in the help file, right? So we've got help. So you can look at the roles and determine what you want to give them. Their login, and this causes all sorts of trouble. Their login for the support site is exactly the same as their TWO login. So your admin logins for you guys, you can log in to the support site using that admin login. Any of your users can log into the support site using their TaxWise online login. And people think it's different, so they think they have a different password, and that's how they end up locking themselves out because it's the exact same thing. So it's the exact same login. I cannot say that enough. But you can add users or give them more rights here if you'd like to. Remember to always log out because, again, this is an online product. So if you just close it and someone sits down a second or two after you, they can open it and get in and, and see it. So make sure you always log out uh, so that nobody else can go in under your name into the support site. That's about it, Alexis, unless we have questions. Let's see. We'll give them a couple minutes to see if anything comes in. Right now, we're looking pretty good, though. Okay. Um, everything's pretty much in your face, you know? And if you get used to either using the menu items, if that's what you like, or using the items in the quick finds down at the bottom, everything's basically here. And, of course, you always have the chat with Ava come up. Um, and so you can always chat with Ava here as well instead of going to look down for the chat. So you can type in a question here. I'm not going to bother them because they're busy um, with real customers, so I'm not going to put a chat in. And I'm forever closing it because it's always in my way. <laughs> so it makes it smaller and easier so it's not where you're looking for. All right. It doesn't look like we have anything coming in, so I think we are doing pretty good today. All right. Is there anything else you can think of that you wanted to talk to them about or talk about the support site? Yep. I think you covered pretty much everything. I can't thank you enough for all of your help this year. Um, and then our final webinar for the year that we do have coming up on the 28th is going to be a webinar with Versacom. So if you guys have not registered for that, I would recommend registering for that. We're going to go over how to implement that in your office and include it in your tax software so okay. that you can go ahead and have those text messages sent out to your client. And guys, that is such a great product. I used it years and years ago in my office. Oh, I used them in all of them, but in my office that did a thousand returns. Um, because you also have an 800 number and they now have an app uh, where the taxpayers can look up the status of their return on the app to see what's going on. But it it answered 10,000 phone calls that my receptionist didn't have to answer or me. Um, so it was huge. I totally recommend everybody getting that 
it's well worth it. Um, and it really can help. And then also on that main info, you can set up to send text messages or emails to the clients in English or Spanish uh, so they can get emails as well. So they can use the app or you can do text or emails to them for their status. And then they also have the 800 number uh, for your taxpayers to call to get status. So that is a great product. I strongly recommend for everyone to use. Awesome. Well, I think we have a couple of questions that have come in, but they're more one-off. So we'll go ahead. If you have sent in a question, I'll have someone here at CIT contact you to go ahead and assist you with that. But other than that, I think we are all done for today, Don. Well, you guys all have a great day. Happy holidays. Enjoy your families and get ready for tax season, guys. <laughs> here we go again. Thank you guys so much for attending today. And thank you again, Don, for all your uh, information and resources you provide. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.